Hey everybody, it's Jason Blahal with Ice Cream Fitness here. I've had a few people ask me something since I became a vegetarian. I think it's funny they're asking me that because I became a vegetarian again, not a vegan. I still consume a lot of dairy protein. But that aside, people are asking me, is soy unhealthy or is it a problem for men? Are the phytoestrogens a problem? Does it slow down muscle protein synthesis and a lot of other questions? So I'm going to try to answer that for you guys briefly and to the best of my ability. But hold on, let me give you guys a bicep shot first. Alright, as far as the estrogenic effects of soy, this is very misunderstood. The phytoestrogens in the soy act as very mild SERMs, which are selective estrogen receptor modulators. The same thing, I'll give you guys an example, something that bodybuilders take to get rid of their bitch tits or help prevent them, Novadex, is a SERM and it actually has similar SERM-like properties to what the phytoestrogens in soy do, meaning it acts as an estrogen blocker in some tissues and it activates the estrogen receptors in others. And actually soy doesn't seem to stimulate it in breast tissue, for example. It seems to actually slightly block the estrogen receptors in breast tissue, while it activates them just very mildly in things like the liver and the bones, which are actually beneficial. And having too low of estrogen is actually a negative for bodybuilders. This is a problem enhanced bodybuilders run into when they start picking their drug stacks, is that if your estrogen levels start dropping below the healthy range, you don't get enough estrogen in your liver and your bones. And accordingly, it messes up your lipid profiles, your HDL, which is your good cholesterol, can go down and you can lose bone density. You don't get as much bone mineralization, while slightly elevated estrogen levels improve these things. And something like a Novadex can be used for that by enhanced bodybuilders who are taking a very, very low estrogenic stack or who are taking an AI to block estrogen production to still help block off that tissue in the breast while getting the benefits in other tissues. And people seem to forget that estrogen itself is very mildly anabolic. So you can get less gains if your estrogen levels drop too low. So when you, you have to look at it in those perspectives of a balance. When you're dealing with some of those phytoestrogens in there, they're very, very, very weak. They're not as strong as you're thinking of as estrogen or even Novadex in the way that they, they bind to these receptors. So this has been blown out of proportion, and if anything, there seems to be health benefits to men from eating soy. Not strong ones, and they're really more beneficial to women, particularly postmenopausal women, because it can help with some of their problems that they run into from their estrogen going too low, while not giving them some of the problems that they would get from more aggressive hormone replacement therapies like increasing chance of breast cancer. And there's never been any documented cases of men growing breast from eating soy and even the studies that show drops in testosterone production have not been consistent. More studies have shown no negative effect on hormone levels in men than the ones that have shown a slight drop for a short period of time from it. So the consensus seems to be that it doesn't seem to inhibit testosterone production or mess with your estrogen negatively in healthy men. Now the next question that gets asked there is how decent of a protein is it? Well, it has a very high amino acid profile. It's quite good. Now, there's different types of soy, depending on how it's been processed, can change that. So that gets really complicated. You guys will have to research that because it tends to be missing one of the essential amino acids you need for muscle protein synthesis. It tends to be low in certain forms of soy, and that's oftentimes added back in when they do certain things to it. So it gets tricky and complicated, but overall it's decent there. It's just as high, it's probably higher than some types of meat, and it's pretty close to being up there with dairy. And actually, eggs and dairy tend to be better than meat as a general rule. But that becomes completely irrelevant with the type of protein intakes most of us are eating. If you're eating 200 grams of protein, it doesn't matter if it's the piss poorest quality amino acid profile you've ever seen. If you're under 200 pounds, that is way above what you need for maximum muscle growth. So it becomes a moot point anyways. But soy does have a pretty good amino acid profile. Now there are debates as far as the isoflavins in it possibly inhibiting muscle protein synthesis, but I've never seen those proven as a long-term thing. And again, we get into a quantitative issue of 
if you're consuming enough protein and your training is on point, will it actually negatively affect your gains in the long term? That's debatable. And all the data I've seen only showed a very short term reduction in certain markers related to muscle protein synthesis, not over time, but only in the short period, and on fairly low protein diets, much lower protein than most serious strength athletes or bodybuilders or anyone trying to gain muscle would consume. So that one remains still an unproven. I remain skeptical because I've known people who eat a lot of soy who are still huge and jacked as fuck. So anecdotally, it doesn't seem to have hurt their gains and the scientific community hasn't proven anything conclusive showing a long-term negative there as far as long-term muscle gain. They've only shown short-term changes in certain markers from it on lower protein diets. So I remain skeptical on that one. So hopefully that explained everything as far as if soy is really a problem or not. And I know it's very confusing, and if you guys want to know more, you're going to have to do your own research because it's really complicated digging into each one of those points I did. Each one of those could be a two-hour video, and I just don't want to fill into soy that much. All right, guys, so that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it has been informative, and I will talk to you next time.